But before that, I just want to share a quick thing before I share the solution. So imagine you're, you're a, you know, God comes down or, you know, he speaks to you in a vision, says, go plant a church. And you go out and there are a few dozen people that they want to know about Jesus. Well, what do you do? Well, you're like, well, I'm going to tell them. Great. And that's the heart of most, you know, church planters. They go out and they want to do that. But here's the problem. So you have all of these people that are coming and they're curious and they want to know. But then you're preparing a sermon on Sunday morning and then you have, you know, you have to figure out how to have space to rent or whatever, then this family has a crisis and that family has a crisis and then you're spending, you know, six hours with this person, you know, who just, you know, went through some major issue in the hospital and then this family over here and then this happens and then your plumbing explodes and then you're, you know, all of everything, life is crazy and then, and so you, instead of going and having, you know, 15 or 18 meetings with people during the week or leading these different groups, I mean, you're overwhelmed, you're burnt out, you can't do this and so what, yeah, what do you do? And so what ends up happening, just by default, and it's not because pastors want to do this, but this is what happens all across the world, especially North America, is so you invite people, you know, to Sunday morning, and then they'll listen to a sermon. It's a great sermon. They come for a few Sundays, and they're really excited about that, and then they decide, I'm going to give my life to Jesus, and so they go through some kind of a, you know, a baptism class, and they, they, they proclaim their, their faith in Jesus and whatnot. And then after that, you know, they get involved in, you know, some kind of a small group or something. And then after that, you know, they get involved in, you know, helping, you know, on Sunday mornings, you know, teaching, you know, children or setting up or whatever. And then what do you do? Uh, you also, you're excited about it, so you invite others. And this kind of becomes your default discipleship process. And it's not because you want it to be that way, it's just because life is so overwhelming and all these things are happening, you just, it's really hard to create something that's multipliable. This is the same issue we have here. And then what ends up happening is then we have people who are doing this, but a lot of people, they're not like self-teachers or self-learners, and so they're not sure what to do to grow and to become more mature. And so over time, somebody could be part of this cycle for 20 years and still be a baby Christian, but not realize it. Because what ends up happening, to become mature as a follower of Christ, it, it, it requires three things. It requires, absolutely, it requires information. You have to learn something. Um, it also requires um, time. So you've just got to have the time to work through that. But it also requires obedience to Jesus. So what it requires, it requires people to learn things, the time to put into practice in obedience. And as people are doing that continuously, they grow and they become more and more mature as the gospel's, you know, leaning into their lives and teaching them how to love their wives, love their children, love their neighbor, you know, love God and, and keep going through that process. But the problem is in this process, a lot of the times you're not getting the right information uh, and you're not realizing where you need to become obedient. So, so anyway, that's, that's the process. So here in St. Jerome, we have all of these people who are curious. We'd like to send out people to plant new churches. And so this is what we've done. Just a second, before I tell you that. <laughs> One of the things that really cool things that's happening all around the world is we see these disciple making movements. And so these are kind of house church movements. We see some of these places, these happening in places like China, parts of India, Algeria, uh, and even parts of the United States, we see these kind of house church disciple making movements and, and it's amazing what God is doing. You know, I've taken some of these trainings, some of these people who are doing this are my friends, and we praise God for this. But here's, the, here's this detention. A disciple making movement come structure, what we've seen around the world, works really well in a house church setting, in a healthy house church setting. But it really doesn't work very well with kind of tra traditional church with a Sunday morning and things like that. And so what do we, I think the house church, the disciple making movement concept is fantastic. We need to be doing that. But what about all of these other established churches? What, are we, what do we do with them? And so this is our attempt to offer something and to create something that's going to work with kind of traditional churches. When I say traditional, I just mean a church that has a Sunday morning with a building and, you know, some of the, 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 the normal structures that we're used to in North America. No. No. 